We've now built a model that tells us the long-run natural level of GDP that will emerge from the steady state level of capital in an economy where we hold labor, natural resources, and technology fixed. But we don't yet see any economic growth in that model, any growth in the natural level of GDP. For economic growth to emerge, something else has to change. Now, one of the assumptions we've made is that the investment share of GDP is constant at 20%. That assumption allowed us to draw the investment curve in our picture. If investment is always 20% of GDP, we can look at GDP and just take 20% of that and draw our investment curve. Now imagine that we could find a way to increase the investment share of GDP, either through public investments in physical capital or through incentives that increase private investment in physical capital. In that case, the investment curve would rotate up. None of the other lines or curves would change. The investment depreciation line wouldn't change. It would still cost the same amount of investment to just keep the capital stock constant as it did before. Nor would the GDP line change. For any level of capital, we still have the same level of GDP. But the investment curve would rotate up. So let's imagine that we start at the investment curve that we got from the assumption that the investment share of GDP is constant at 20%. That's our starting point, so we'll put a 1 next to that. And that results in the steady state level of capital and in the steady state level of natural GDP. Now we increase that investment share of GDP to something larger, 20%, 30%, whatever you want. And that's going to rotate that investment curve up. So now we have a new investment curve. We'll put a 2 on this. And a new intersection with the investment depreciation line. We know that the steady state level of capital emerges at that intersection. So the steady state level of capital now increases to this new steady state level of capital. And at that new steady state level of capital, we have a new steady state level of long run natural level of GDP. So we have a new GDP level here. We've just produced economic growth. So one way we can produce economic growth is to just focus on investment in the economy. If we increase the share of investment as a fraction of GDP, we will increase the level of capital, and that's going to cause an increase in the level of GDP. But, of course, there's a limit to how much we can increase the share of investment to GDP. Perhaps we can push it up to 25% or 30%, but there is a limit to that. So the amount of growth we're going to get from just increasing the investment share of GDP has its limits. We could also think about changing some other assumptions in the model. We could cause people to have more children by giving incentives for having more children, and in the long run that would result in a larger labor force and more labor hours. Or we could open the borders to increased immigration, and that would increase the number of labor hours. When we increase the number of labor hours, that would affect the GDP curve, it would rotate up, and for any level of capital, we would get more GDP. But of course, what we're really interested in is GDP per capita, which is a measure of the standard of living. If we increase the labor force, if we increase the number of people in the economy, we have to divide GDP by a larger number to get per capita GDP. So while by increasing the labor hours through increasing fertility or increasing immigration will produce more GDP, it won't produce as much of a percentage increase in per capita GDP. And of course, there's also a limit to how much we can increase population. We could also think about digging for more natural resources. If we dig for more natural resources, then that too would rotate the GDP curve upward. And for any given level of capital, 
we would get more steady state GDP. But again, there's a limit to how many natural resources we can really find. So while we can find some sources for economic growth in changing labor hours through increased fertility or immigration, or changing uh, the natural resources by just finding more natural resources, there are natural limits to those sources for economic growth, just as there's a natural limit to finding economic growth solely in increasing the investment share of GDP. So ultimately, where we're going to look for a long-run and continuing source of economic growth is in changes in technology.